Good evening, dear friends, all of you who are listening in, and some of you have been with Joy Chapel for many years. Some of you may never have been there, but we really miss getting together at Trinity Lutheran on Thursday nights, eating together and worshiping together with you all. We, we, we miss that, but this is the best we can do for the time being. So I want to pray and ask God to bless us. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this beautiful late summer night evening. And thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us in spite of all that's going on. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, evening time we can gather and, and even by the by the mean, by means of technology to, to be connected. And let us pray that you bless our time together for your honor and your glory and for the encouragement of each one that is tuned in. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, thank you, Corny. And you know what would have been tonight if we would have had a normal, a normal year? Tonight would have been our first Joy Chapel together, probably. So yes, we do miss you all, and we're praying for you. And uh, we miss our guests, their staff, our volunteers, our board. We miss you all. And remember, we're praying for you. And so now, we're going to sing Awesome God, and then the Wordless Book Chorus. Now, quite often, this song is way too fast for me, so we'll see how it is. My tongue has a hard time moving that fast. So. When he rose up in sleeves, he ain't just putting on the fits. Our God is an awesome God. There's thunder in his footsteps and flat lightning in his fist. Our God is an awesome God. And the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. And it wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood. His return is very close, so you'd better be believing that our God is an awesome God. Our God. Is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wings and power and love. God is an awesome God. When the sky was starless in the void of the night, our God is an awesome God. He spoke into the darkness and created the light. Our God is an awesome God. Judgment and wrath he poured out on Saul. Mercy and grace he gave us at the cross. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten that our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. God is an awesome God. God. Black with sin until the 
Savior came in. His precious blood I know has washed it white as snow. And in God's word we're told we'll walk the streets of gold. What a wonderful, wonderful day. Jesus washed my sins away. And now Evanstein will work on our memory verse. That's fine. Well, tonight, we're, I'm going to talk for a minute about yes and no. Yes and no. One of the first words that little babies learn when they start to talk is no. But we like the word yes, don't we? Because yes is so positive. Do you know there's a verse in Second Chronicles 1... 10, or 120 rather, it says, no matter how many promises it, God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so that's a nice verse, isn't it? God makes all these wonderful promises, and they're yes, because he's such a wonderful God, and he has made such a wonderful life for those who believe. And so we liked this yes. But there are a few things that we need to know about no, because no is important. I remember one time somebody talking about the fact that we need to say yes to Jesus, but we also need to say no to some things. One of them is sin, of course, and God wants us to hate sin. But there's another uh, word that's very much like no, and we're going to learn the N verse, and it starts with the word not. And of course, not is just about the same as no. So this first, this N verse starts with not. And it's going to tell us about what something is not. And this is from God's word. And it says not by works, that's things that we do, of works of righteousness. Now righteousness is things that are right, uh, good things, righteousness. And so the verse is not by works of righteousness that we have done. But there is something that God says that we should do. But by his mercy, Jesus will put he saved us. And that is found in Titus. So, I think Courtney's going to talk a little bit about that. We're not supposed to count on our good things that we do to save us and to make us right with God. Because we are to count on his mercy. And Courtney will be explaining that. So, this is where the verse starts, right here. It starts with not. Now, some of the versions of, of this verse. Uh, this verse was written in Greek in the beginning, and some of the versions talk about the, they talk about the verse backwards. He saved us, not by works of righteousness, but by his mercy. And that's the usual way we talk. But you know, I looked it up in my little Greek New Testament that my dad gave me many years ago, and in the Greek, the first word is not. And so Jesus wanted us to notice that we're not to count on the good things we do to get to heaven and to be with Jesus. So it says, not by works of righteousness that we have done, 
but according to his mercy, he saved us. Titus 3, 5. Thank you, Evangeline, for giving us that memory verse, the theme verse for tonight. And uh, find my place here. So, yes, so, um, Titus, what is the word Titus about? Titus was a man, a, a Greek man. He was one of Paul's converts. And Paul, call, Paul called him my true son in, in the faith. So that means Titus was born again when Paul was preaching the gospel, and Paul calls him my true son in the faith. And several of, in several of Paul's letters, he mentioned Titus. Now, Paul had also been on the, on the Crete, going from town to town. There were, Crete is 150 miles long and 30 miles wide, so it's quite a large island. And there are several towns there. And he preached in all of those towns. And wherever he preached, a few people would believe. So Paul then sent Titus to Crete to organize the churches in each town to ordain elders and preachers and to tell them what they should teach and how they should preach. And so that is a um, little bit of background there. Now, I want to read to you from, these, from the first seven verses in Titus chapter three. Is it getting some feedback here? Uh. Anyway, we'll read, okay, it says in verse 1, remind them, that is the people in, in, the, in Crete, to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration, or of being born again, and by the renewing of the Holy Spirit. And so, then I'll read on. Whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And uh, that is the first seven verses of, of, of Titus chapter 3. And uh, so what are we human beings so prone to do? We're so ready to speak evil of people and to be disobedient, especially to any authority. That's human nature. And uh, so, be to be subject to rulers and to all those in authority. To, to, uh, to speak evil of no man, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. And so, we're so ready to speak evil of people, especially those people who are elected or who are in leadership. And um, in Christ, uh, that's not supposed to be true of us. And if that happens to be true of us, if we take stock of ourselves and, and we have to say, whoops, sorry, Lord, I missed it. And we're not letting the Holy Spirit work in our life when, we're, when we do that when we think those things. It's not a sin to think, but it is a sin to dwell on that thought and then dwell on it and mull it over. And then we get negative and we, we get angry. And so that's sin. So um, then um, Paul was speaking from experience, from himself. Because Paul, as a Jew and an educated Pharisee, thought that he could, he could find God's approval by keeping the law to the letter 
and doing lots of good works. And, and Paul uh, persecuted the church all around Jerusalem because he thought Jesus was leading people astray, leading them away from the law. Now, that's not true because Jesus said, uh, I did not come to, de to uh, destroy the law, but to fulfill it. And every jot and every tittle of the law will be fulfilled. And Jesus fulfilled it all. And uh, so Paul, when he was on his way to Damascus to arrest the Christians in that town, Jesus stopped him on the road. Jesus was by then had ascended to heaven, but he came down and he appeared and he and, and Saul fell and heard this voice speaking to me and and Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So his name in Hebrew was Saul. And Paul was shocked to discover that he was the one that was leading people astray. He was the one that was not teaching the truth. And he repented and he turned to the Lord 100%. And he became one of the most effective and, uh, of, of all the apostles. Uh, and, and preaching all over the place where others had not preached yet. And uh, so he wrote a large part of the New Testament, I believe 13 of the, of, the, of the chapter of the books in the New Testament written by Paul. And, uh, but that wasn't Paul's writing. What we were reading here is that Paul didn't make this up because Jesus said, and I'll turn to that place in John chapter um, 16 Jesus said however when he the spirit of truth has come he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but will tell you um, okay he, he hears okay I'll do that I'll read that again he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come he will glorify me, for he, for he will take of what is mine and declare to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. And so what we are reading here is, is declared by the Holy Spirit. Paul, it says all scripture is God breathed. It says in 2 uh, Timothy chapter six, uh, 3, verse 16. All scripture is God breathed. And it's profitable for doctrine, for truth, for, for instruction in righteousness. And so um, these are God's words that Paul was writing down. And that's what he would tell them. This is what you are to teach. And so, so he taught them, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to or by his mercy. You say that now, what, what is mercy? Mercy is not getting what we deserve. That's God's mercy. Amen. And so grace is getting what we didn't deserve. And so we read here, and I read it earlier, that we're not saved by work, but by his mercy, and by washing of re regen that by, by, by the new birth and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. So we, we're not, we're uh, saved by mercy, not getting what we deserve, but we receive eternal life by grace, what we don't deserve. And so that is the only way and we can come to God. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the light. No one comes to the Father except by me. And so when we, when we are saved through faith in Jesus alone, then we're called to, to work. And so in uh, Ephesians chapter 2, it says that, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works that anyone should boast. 
Now, if we could, if we could earn our way to heaven by doing good works, am I okay? If we could earn our way to heaven by doing good works, we would get proud, and we see somebody else not doing those same good works, and we judge them. We'd be, we could go oh, better than you, and we, we, God didn't allow us that. It's all from Him. So it's a gift of God, not of works that anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And so after we've come to Christ, then those good works should be demonstrated. And then we can speak well of everybody else and not gossip about so-and-so, which is so prevalent. So many people do that. And we've all done it, but that is sin. And so we speak well of people. People speak well of this one. We speak well of, so if I speak well of Jonathan to Dorothy, or I speak well of Dorothy to Jonathan, that's, that's what, what, is, what, is, uh, what we mean here. And, and uh, so we can do the thing. We, we, can, we can pray for those who are in leadership, who are in authority, rather than, than, than grumbling or maybe cursing them in our hearts, we pray for them because they are in position of leadership that God has called them to. And so we should pray for a prime minister and for a premier and for, for our MP and, and uh, so on, the mayor, mayor of town. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's what happens when the Holy Spirit comes. And um, Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify my Father in heaven. So we don't get the glory. God does. And when these good, good works happen, we're probably not aware because the Holy Spirit produces them in our life and that's the way it should be. And what, are, what, are, what is the fruit of the Spirit? What is, what is it like to be filled with the Spirit? Yeah. Love, joy, peace, kind, uh, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. <coughs> and <coughs> excuse me. And uh, that is being filled with the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit produces those works that we hadn't even thought of. We see somebody in need, and we want to help them. We want to do it not because we're trying to earn any any favor by it. But we want to help that person, or, or that that uh, basically that's what it, what it comes to be. And other people see the good works, and they glorify our Father in heaven. So that's what I want what I want to share with you tonight. And so to trust in Jesus with all our heart, and receive the new birth, born again from Him, and then be filled with the Holy Spirit, so that. The Holy Spirit can produce those good works that will give glory to God the Father. And so let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for allowing us to come together like this. And I pray that you'll bless this word to each heart. And I pray that you'll give each one a good night tonight, a good rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Corny and yes, uh, you know what? Sad to say, but next week when we when we meet again, it will be the word fall, autumn, no more summer. So even though it hasn't felt like summer to me, but uh, it is going to be over soon. But we're praying for y'all, and Lord willing, we'll try to connect again next week. <laughs>